Welcome back to the boathouse, where off camera there was quite a bit of cleanup to take care of after Carolyn and Steve pitched the bilge. But now that the wells along the keel timber are filled, work on Arabella's bulkheads can proceed. Today's main task is trimming out the door to the forepeak with some mahogany from Victoria. And with several thunderstorms rolling in, Steve was sure glad not to have that big maple tree hanging above the project. Well, I'm really glad we got that tree down. It is windy. I guess I gotta repair the boathouse tomorrow. Once this is cleaned up, it will be quite pretty. I think it'll be nice. Yeah. All that ray flat going on. Mm -hmm. And with the price of plywood these days. Oh goodness. What do we see it in at Home Depot? Like 87 for, for uh, MSB? Particle? Yeah. OSB, yeah. 80 something dollars a sheet. This is a little bit nuts. You know, the lofting floor was OSB. We got a whole bunch of that in the garage. Ooh, I think it matters that it's been painted. Amount of wood. Yeah, I mean, between the cherry, the maple, and the mahogany, I don't think we're going to want for timber. <laughs> so. While you're gone, Carolyn, I uh, went through all of Victoria's mahogany. So we've got a couple of the kind of not so great panels down here. We've got the collection of all the doors. The rest of the panels I brought into the boathouse. Uh, so as we're working with those, if you want to see what the doors look like, we just got to kind of jigsaw puzzle which one goes where, but it shouldn't be too, too difficult. It's beautiful to have all these things. Yeah, I mean, you know how much time and energy is here indoors? Oh, absolutely. Like a month or more worth of work. It's We would never be making doors like this. It just is way too time consuming. But yeah. Super awesome. Sweet, what else we got um, in the shop here? Cool. And then I dug through the mahogany back here. So as we're working with stuff, this is all now situated where we should be able to find what we need. Okay. Um, this is what's left of Victoria's cockpit. Um, we'll see. I think some of this stuff's a bit rotten, but see what we can get out of it. Sure. There's the house sides, which we got to figure out what to do. They've got the port light holes in them, but there's still some like pretty big thick pieces of mahogany. Another piece of the house side, the rudder, which I think is mostly rotten, but we can dive in. This is the only part of her center line that was solid. And this is a solid piece of mahogany. Wow. From her stem. So I'm not quite sure what we should do with that, but we have like one cool really big piece of mahogany. 
That's a pretty cool piece of wood. This is all paneling that's already had the paint stripped off it. Cool. So if you ever hear me talk about Madison the Mermaid, she did that. She came and volunteered and just wow. ran stuff through the drum sander. Um, so there's like some halfway decent pieces from her covering boards. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a bunch of thin paneling. Sweet. That's all tongue and groove. Was that the ceiling? Yeah, that was the ceiling. Nice. And then... I'm assuming this is from the days where you could go buy either a tree or several shipping containers of mahogany and just bring them to your boat shop. No more. Yeah, no. no. So the doctor that had Victoria built, she was built in 1926-27 in New York. He went to Honduras to pick out the logs for the boat. So this is all Honduran mahogany from the 1920s, which you can't, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, so this stuff is all decking. Um, I think it's pretty much all decking here from the housetops. But you can see we've got some, some decent runs. Sure. And we can even reuse these fastener holes or plug them. Sure. Um, so there's a whole bunch there. Feel free to dig through as we need it. And then, yeah, let's go in the boathouse and check that stuff out. So local, not a, not a hunter and mahogany tree, but trees you went and picked out. Yeah, yeah, so this is local wood. Uh, this is all the sugar maple that we have. So I want to use a bunch of that in the interior because uh, it finishes up real nice. And then this is all the cherry. We just, you know, you know we just brought this out. Um, yeah, I forget exactly who, but it was a little while ago. Someone asked if we wanted a bunch of air dried cherry they had. And we were like, yes, please. Um, so that's been stacked up in the garage. We have some, I mean, some really, really beautiful pieces. Thank you, that person. Yeah, this is going to be amazing. So I want to make judicious use of those. And then all the mahogany is upstairs. So I, I essentially just sprawled it down the length of the uh, spar bench here. But we've got the corner posts from her house sides. And then we've got the rest of her frames. So these were underneath the settees, and they had little doors that opened up. And then these bigger ones were the backrests of the settees. They had like a bookshelf behind them. So I'd like to reuse those in that same use and configuration. We have all the doors that go in. Oh, it's gorgeous. Absolutely. Um, but this is all just half inch mahogany. So that's what's in this pile. And then half of this box is all just one inch boards of mahogany. And then the other half is all smaller pieces of the half inch. Cool. There's also some like half rounds and all sorts of little decorative trim pieces and stuff. There's some in there as well. So as we're looking for edges and putting lips on stuff, kind of dig through it. It might already exist. And then this is really the cream of the crop. All of her bunk boards and everything. So like underneath the cushions, uh, it was all mahogany. Those so, are some pretty wide pieces there, Steve. Yeah, there's some really, really big boards. So. That's what we have to work with. Cool. Well, it seems like we got plenty to get us started. I think so. Should save actually quite a bit of time on the interior having so much of this already built, but it is a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Sure. Kind of getting it to fit. Mm -hmm. And then I worked on getting the bulkhead fit inside. Oh, great. Here comes the rain. Yeah. So I got the door cut out and I, this was the first panel that I made the test run. Okay. And I got that cut out. I still need to do a little more joinery work here where they meet, but that'll fill in that corner. And then when the trim goes in for the mahogany here around the door, that'll kind of join the two. So I don't even think you'll really see the seam. Ready when you are? The diesel was moved forward to make way for pitching underneath. So before getting too far along with the bulkheads, they got that dragged back into place. This one now. Okay. Gonna give us a click. 
Yep. Right. Coming. We're forward. almost all the way back on the beds. Okay. Ready? Coming out? Yep. Right. Awesome. We're all the way on now. Okay, now we're just fighting these bolts that have on top of. You got it? It's all yours. You want to run top side? I'll hand it up to you. I do. I do want that. time to start cutting up and utilizing Victoria's mahogany, which is both exciting and a little nerve-wracking. I mean, this stuff literally is irreplaceable. Up to this point, if we mess up a nice piece of timber, it's, you know, we can kind of go out back and cut it and drying time is a little limited, but there is no way that we are going to get matching Honduran mahogany to what we have. So we pulled off out all the stuff and went through it, kind of got things sorted. And the first task is going to be to frame in the door to the four peak. So I have some half inch thick trim pieces and we're gonna rip these up and they go inside to cover up where you see the glue lines with the cedar and the oak. And then on the aft facing side, the side that goes towards the saloon, we're going to put on these wide half inch strips, which are perfect. One half is rounded, one is square with the cove. So we'll clean these up a little bit and those will go perfectly. And then on the forward side, inside the four peak, I chose some heavier stock. And this is because the door is going to close against these. So we want these to be a little bit more robust. I'm going to pull some measurements and fire up the table saw. And get to cutting and fitting these. This is actually square cabinetry work, which is the first bit of that we've done on Arabella. Uh, and we're gonna get Carolyn going on the inside, working on the next round of bulkheads. Cool. All right, so you see that tape on the build stringer? I do. So that forward most one, that should be roughly where the bulkhead's gonna go that ends the bunk and begins where like the wood stove and the galley are gonna go. Right, I remember this from your mock-up with yeah. the stove in here, cool. There is the slight chance that as we start to build things out, that tape mark is gonna go aft one frame bay. Sure. But I think you can make a pattern for the one where it is now, and if we moved it aft, we can just trim the pattern yeah. a little bit. I mean, the amount of shape difference one foot over is not like, astronomical no um, it'll still still get us like 90 percent of the way there and then if we go way aft see that first big oak knee there i do right around there is going to be the end of the galley so probably yes. just after the knee okay. yeah the bulkhead will go just after the knee cool yeah so i think those are the two places that we got to get patterned out sweet um, we can't cut the bulkheads until we have a little more information. I think we really got to get that big one installed. Right. That's kind of everything else gets built right. off of that. Right. Um, but if we can get these, you know, the two patterns made and a little bit oversized, mm -hmm. um, that'll be a good jump start. Yeah. So we're going to pattern for the shape of the hull today. And then at some point we're going to have to figure out where the sole is going to come to and where, how far amidships that bunk is going to, that settee bunk is going to come. So yeah, we've got plenty to work on right now.
this. He's not gonna stop. Was he barking at this time? I don't know, that's, that's new. more than a rabbit bark. Apparently there, there wasn't a hole. No? So I'm just unscrewing, unscrewing. The filter like goes down, it just drops down and all just drops on top. How much came out? <laughs> oh, what? Like did you catch it or is there hydraulic fluid everywhere? I thought it was Okay. It was just a rabbit. Literally, just a rabbit. Oh man, I love that dog, but sometimes he drives me batty. I just wanted to put something along the bottom edge there to clamp to. Over there? Yes, yeah, so you're not clamping to the bottom of the plywood. We should be able to clamp to the bottom of the plywood just fine. Okay. I mean, these are like, we literally just have to get them to sit there. I know. It's just going against all the other things in my brain. Yeah. All right. Well, it's the joy of epoxy, and it's also the joy of like, this is just trim. True. Like, if it falls off or it pulls out someday, I'll put a screw in it or I'll smear a little more epoxy behind there and put another clamp on it. It's, yeah. it's not like if this fails, the boat sinks. That is incredibly true and a really good perspective on things. So today we're going to use thick fill flex. If I can zoom in. <laughs> Actually, this stuff's been really handy. It's um, applications like this. It's great to have it in the squirt tube. There's not like an incredible amount of epoxy in here, but it, uh, it makes application really easy. So, jettison the first little bit that comes out. Because it's got the, the mixing little fingers here. And you want to make sure that the first couple inches that you discard just so that you have enough pressure that it's all mixed well. I need more spring clamps. Cool. I'll have a little bit of sanding to do, but 
don't think that will be much of a problem. I think that'll work. See what it looks like tomorrow when we take the clamps off. Now, can I get out without disturbing these? Some perks to being slight of build sometimes. Cool. I think that is a fine stopping point for today. We'll let this dry. And tomorrow, I'll spend some serious time behind the sander. Keep an eye out for a new bonus video next week. Steve filmed the whole process of applying finish coats to the first bulkhead here. Minimal talking aside from the birds and Akiva. So if you have notifications on, you'll get a message when that comes out. And just press the bell icon next to the subscribe button if you haven't and you'd like to know when that drops. Next week, the first bulkhead gets put into place, and Steve and Carolyn move on to some other parts of the interior. Thanks so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting the channel in all of the ways that you do, and we look forward to having you back here again next Friday. The varnish makes it easy to like slide your hand away. Oh, this is so much easier than last time, Steve. Yeah, I know. Right, and perfect. Can we go? Starboard, right. Ooh, I'm gonna have to cut the corner off the trim, I think. 